things that are presented today before you have been designed with the thought that our wounded veterans that have returned home and are in the process of recovering their lives. I'm Ty Hodge, Community Affairs Manager with the Home Depot Foundation. Um, the Home Depot Foundation last April announced a three-year, $30 million pledge uh, to improving the homes and lives of veterans. We actually want to make sure that every veteran in this country has a safe place to call home. So the bulk of my work and the mission of the foundation is really to partner with great organizations that are doing uh, amazing things to really address the housing issues facing veterans uh, throughout the country. And I'm excited today because uh, I first developed an interest in architecture in high school and uh, found that it was a seed which uh, I, I, I let grow for many years and eventually went back to school for architecture. And uh, it's kind of that, that core interest when you're a certain age that, that brings you uh, the energy to, to go after a career. Uh, I'm Eric Lutbetter. I'm a native Atlanta and I work for Niles Bolton Associates. I took, a, took an interest in, in high school for architecture and drafting and I actually skipped driver's ed so I could take uh, my architecture class and I think that's paid off pretty well for me so far. Um, my name is Brian Bell. I'm uh, also an architect here in town and uh, partners with David in our firm buildings. I'm Helen Hatch and I'm an architect with Thompson Vinchlet Stainback TVS Design. My name is Margaret Barnett and I actually grew up across the street at Stevens and Wilkinson. I'm Nathan Koskis. I'm a principal with Studio ALA Architects. Uh, Hi, I'm Lisette Robinson. I am an architect and interior designer. Hi, I'm Dr. Mildrina Chapin. I teach at the Savannah College of Art and Design in the Interior Design Program. And again, this is all, you know, that's not, actually not, that's not connected. Okay, so she talks about healing environment, universal design, sort of pointing and you can see there's an attitude about it. This is this is not an international competition. Oh gosh. When you when you see it, it seems like it would be hard to look at the glass and clear your walls art formation. It's just a great design. And if it were to be built, we would have things with love and quality. Go together with the plan and create a building. Um, I just think that how you present your material is as important as the design itself. Mm -hmm. And so this is an example of where you can use two boards and get all the information across. And, and something else, just little details like the continuity of the black frame around it. I mean, whether you know people think that or not, that's what makes this look so great is the fact that it's tied together just on the flat surface as well without even the written information on there, mm -hmm. which helps your eye understand what we're talking about. I think it's important to point out that craft is also, mm -hmm. you know, something that, that you're, we're going to be looking for. And, you know, there's a, there's this, uh, like, a real need for a change in X-Acto blade here to keep this nice and clean and, right. and, yes, that and even... That happened at midnight last night. <laughs> <laughs> I think what's interesting about this project and some of the others is just how far outside the box some of these ideas are that you would never see and that kind of energy and this is a kind of an it ends up creating this kind of amazing layering pattern of the roof over the plan uh, in a very creative way. Yeah, but this project is uh, uh, they landed on the idea that water and the presence of water will be um, uh, important to the healing process and so they found a way to introduce the idea and the fluidity of water into geometry of the roof and, and to, to break down a very boxy building yeah. and they've done it in a very animated joyful way. What I really like about this project is the fact you know 
they had this concept of waves, the sort of great idea, but that they didn't let that sort of overpower the rest of the project. It's still functional, has great outdoor spaces, but it's a comfortable environment, lots of community uh, or communal aspects of the project. So even though, obviously, they, that concept of waves was there, you know, that didn't detract from some of the other objectives. We've seen a lot of really interesting projects during this um, hurried rush morning, but we brought a couple that we thought were really intriguing. Um, this project was highly successful because it shows us a lot of process work, um, and it mixes hand rendering, which gives a very home residential comfort feel, with um, also uh, computer-aided drawings. I think some of the other things were the use of the background, at least the style of presentation, and you can sort of grab the other boards and, and see how they sort of, just in terms of a presentation style, there's a there's at least a background. It's not just a white board, uh, but it at least gave thought to to what the, the background. Uh, the thing I really love about this project. Tell us what you like about the project. <laughs> well, first Don't of all, hold back. I'm not holding back. This project was one of the first to take uh, a, a, the typical torch we see, which is a box or a series of long uh, extruded bars. And it says we're going to take a curvilinear approach to the relationship between the street and the building and the lake. So you've got this very active exterior form which juts out a bit to the lake. It also accepts some pathways and it integrates the exterior and interior. And what results is this lower activity room, which then has an upper floor overlooking it. So one of the primary goals of this project is to induce and support a sense of community. And so this project is really um, doing a successful job at that. Level. Very strong, yeah. very strong floor plan. One thing that's quite interesting here, the degree that the panels, uh, as a background to the project, have a uh, sense of fluttering, uh, flame-like quality to them. It's so, another project in and of itself. That's right. Mm -hmm. It's kind of neat to see this kind of sketch and simple idea of uh, of a building with a flame shape on top, the way it evolves through the building in the later renderings, mm -hmm. it's a much more abstract form. But you still kind of get that idea of a platform or like the torch holding up this other thing on the top. And then you can see in the rendering, there's that little bed, Brian pointed this out earlier, where this idea of this, well, I guess patterns that would be flame-like or curling starts to play in at a really small scale too. You know, I, I was very impressed with these young people and how, how thorough they were and what their computer um, experience was. And I thought that was very interesting. And a lot of them, to me, had took the program, had shown in the floor plans, and I would say were very competent. And I think that there's somewhat of a hesitancy on the part of some of the students to think a little bit more outside of the box and be a little bit more creative about what the building looks like and, and where it's going and, and uh, how it really fits into the surroundings. So I, I look forward to seeing a little bit more of that in, in the future possibilities. I agree. Yeah. Um, well, I'm yeah, I mean, I, I, I could not. You know, I don't know why. With my project. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I, mean, I could support and talk about each of these three outputs. Yep. So we'll start with the torch here, which is actually, the project is actually, I think it started life as, as this sketch, which is sort of a takeoff on the Statue of Liberty torch, the symbol for liberty. But then they kind of developed it through kind of looking at plans to create this stacked plan with this kind of abstract roof garden sculpture on it. So I think uh, sticking with the theme of really applauding creativity, we've got here the phoenix, which is sort of a very ambitious, grand idea. Um, uh, you, they even describe it uh, as sort of a, a large, resilient structure that really, for them, sort of embodies what uh, a veteran is. Uh, so uh, this project, the Elite Protector Sanctuary, um, is developed as a, as a bar building, but it's broken through with this glass entry uh, lobby and element that uh, is kind of at the knuckle. And one thing that we really appreciated about the development of this project was how it, the roofs start stepping down towards the, uh, 
towards the pond. But there, there are two things going on in this project. One is it's very strong massing and a very clear plan. But um, the clip out, are, I think, is actually a, a disadvantage. Because if you look at other projects, you see that they've actually taken the time to render what these spaces look like. Um, here's a little rendering of a room. Uh, here's a rendering of the view. And I think uh, whether or not this is the best project or not, or whether it gets an award, I'm trying to make a larger point that I'm in favor of the projects that go to the effort of rendering and drawing their ideas, mm -hmm. more so than those that just put pictures in for reference. I like the fact that it separates the public and the private. I like the fact that it, it expresses what's happening between the, the different elements with this glass structure, which is transparent, which sees through to the lake, which I think is very important. The floor plan is, the roof plan is somewhat sophisticated in the fact that you can see the floor below through the skylights. Mm -hmm. And um, and you can tell there was a great amount of joy in creating that drawing. It's a beautiful drawing. Um, kind of dissolving the, the rigid architecture with the idea of the waves and the water. And they talk about, in the description, about the role of water in, thera in the therapeutic aspects of that. In our um, projects, we had some that had some really strong creativity, and we wanted to make sure that we showed those to um, the group. We had two projects here that, um, this one explores um, its concept really fully. Some of our committee members uh, debated on whether or not flame was appropriate for this type of project, but we really, really thought that it was extremely interesting about that we got all of this process work, we're thinking about it two-dimensionally, we're thinking about it three-dimensionally, it develops into this really unique and innovative floor plan, starts to move into some you know, really great three-dimensional spaces. You can see the struggle there, the early sketches, trying to figure out how these two forms come together. This oh. particular drawing as well, they've kind of made it 3D. They've mm -hmm. pulled it off the board, so that you get the sense of the building. Why don't we talk about the AIA Veterans Housing first? All right, this one we thought was interesting, again, and someone else has already commented on the fact that, uh, that the program was broken up into parts so that you can have, uh, you can see the individual spaces based on the usage. Yeah, I think, I think First of all, I think the, the elevations in this are pretty sophisticated compared to a lot of them. There's this layering and shifting of window heights. Um, as I said earlier in the discussion part, the balance between the privacy of the soldiers and the actual communal power, which is essential to this program, is really held strongly in this project. Um, and I also think the way it's been planned, although there might be some problems with how the bathroom size is or the relationship of the interstitial spaces, those are all things that you can shift around in a later iteration that's not going to kill the overall power of the design. They're going to be really minor shifts that without having to change the entire part T. Um, I think it'd be very convincing as a built project as it stands now, though. So, so I, I am a huge fan of Williams. Uh, I think, again, it's just a great idea that I think was really well executed. I think it's great to have an initial idea. At a certain point, the metaphor needs to drop away. And, and becomes the, the design. Yeah. If you compare waves with something like AIA Veterans Housing, there's no concept that's hitting us over the head. There's a design that's resolved to a certain degree. You know, they've they've done something that, that the other projects haven't, which is which was pointed out earlier, which is to address the entry. The entry is entry is clear. It's it's well done. It's inviting. Well, this one I think is is very pretty sophisticated, and I really like the fact that it changes the fenestration from the between the public space and the uh, guest rooms, and it's very clear. Basic part two is really <laughs> strong, and as I said earlier, it's robust. Like it's it's an idea that's going to stand up to a lot of intense investigation and criticism that you can. Move a lot of parts around, it's still the same idea and the same concept. It's a really well planned out that way. 